well. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I take authority over the hour. And I declare life. I declare life. I declare peace. I declare liberty over the hour. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that your word shall go forth. That your word shall go forth and it shall prosper. Amen. It shall reach every heart and mind, God. Heart and mind and cause and cause to be able to change. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Y'all come on in. Come on in, come on in. Blessings, everyone. Blessings. Blessings. It's Pastor Roscoe here. With intentional living, and I'm glad that you guys decided to join me this evening. It's going to be an awesome word. It's going to be an awesome time. And I'm excited about sharing the word with you guys. Yeah. I'm excited about sharing the word. Um, this is actually part three of a, of a um, three-part series that I've been teaching on deliverance. Just, I want to give you guys a um, recap of the first two nights. The first one... Um, well, first I want to read this. I want to quote a scripture um, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, something that Jesus said. You know, we have to uh, remember because uh, how do you know the, the kingdom of God is at hand? Or how do you know the kingdom of God is upon you? You know, he comes with signs. He comes with wonders, right? So this is what, this is what um, Jesus quoted. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He'll the brokenhearted, right? Preach deliverance to the captives and recover in sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. So in this one particular scripture, we already see that Jesus, um, he comes to deliver us. He comes to um, heal us. And a part of healing and deliverance, what he's saying, um, to set the captives free, right? And and I believe, and he says, to recover sight to the blind. So part of recovering that sight to the blind, that's spiritually as well as naturally. So, you know, everything in the spirit, so it is in the spirit, so it is in the natural. And so he came to literally set us free. He came to set us free in our minds. He came to set us free in our emotions. He came to set us free in our physical, in, in our bond, or um, those things that are hindering in our natural bodies. So he literally came to set us free. And, and he came by preaching the word, right? And he said, he, and said the Father anointed him to do that and to heal the broken heart. And so guess what? God wants to heal your broken hearts. Many of us have been heartbroken. Many of us have, have gone through many things. And God, and God literally sent Jesus to heal our hearts. And so I'm just praying that, that um, we receive healing on tonight in those inward places that man cannot touch. Only the Lord can touch. And I'm just... And I'm praying that the word that he allows me to release goes straight into your heart and heals it in the name of Jesus. So, so on the first night, we talked about what is deliverance and who is it for. And one of the things we discussed, deliverance is for, deliverance is for, is for believers. Deliverance is for believers. And, and, um, and deliverance is basically a benefit or one of the benefits of your salvation, you know. And the reason that it's for believers, the reason it's for believers is because as a believer, you're to walk, you're to walk um, a certain way to maintain. We, we learned that you have to maintain your deliverance because, you, you know, you don't just get delivered and it's done and over with. No, actually, you have to maintain your deliverance. We learned that you have to, you have to, um, you have to maintain, you have to keep it, you have to protect it and you have to keep your deliverance. So it's not it's not something that you just get delivered and then you it's over with. No, it's a process of deliverance, and there's many types of deliverance. The first deliverance is when you first get saved, right? You receive salvation and um, and you get delivered spiritually. But there's still different parts of you that still hadn't been delivered yet. There's your soul. There's your soul, man, that still haven't been delivered, which is your mind, your will, and your emotion. You have to be delivered in many of those ways because all the hurt and the pain that you've experienced throughout the years. And the things that people have done to you. So you need deliverance. And um, and also in your natural body, if you're experiencing any type of sickness or disease, the Lord wants to heal you of that as well. And so he literally sent this word um, to do that. On the, second, on the second night, we talked about types of deliverance. 
And one of the type of deliverance um, that we talked about was the hearing and the receiving of the gospel. Jesus literally said that he said, no, it was Paul that said, he said, for I am not ashamed of the, of this gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, you know, for the Jews first and then the Greeks. So literally he said the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And so within salvation and deliverance, they literally go hand in hand. And also we learned that healing goes hand in hand with deliverance. So a part of being delivered is being healed. Many times when Jesus healed folks, he didn't, he didn't say, I'm delivering you. He said, and they said, the Bible says that he healed them. He healed their sick. He healed their infirmities, you know. And then scripture literally, um, with, with him, him healing people physically, healing them emotionally, and, um, and setting people free. So, and another concept that I, that I, I shared that, and I'm not going to take credit for it because it's actually an apostle, um, um, Alexander Pagani. I encourage you to look him up. He's a, he's a um, general when it comes to deliverance. And he's one of the, um, actually one of this time. And one of the things that he talks about is, um, is cleaning the rooms, going in a different room. See what light is, light literally are the light of God. God literally wants to go in those dark rooms and turn on the light. And he wants to be, be able to clean those, clean those rooms that haven't been cleaned. There's, there's, there's much abuse that, that we've experienced, much hurt and pain that we, that we don't want to deal with. But God wants to heal those wounds. God wants to heal those those secret places. And the only way He can do it if He if He if you allow Him to go in there and turn that light on, you know, because the enemy is able to hide in darkness, right? He's known the prince of the power of the air. He's the prince of darkness. So anything as it concerns darkness, which means ignorance, which means I don't know, which means uh, so I literally have to I literally have I literally need light. So I need the light of God to. To, to basically shine on all my ways and be able to expose all the dark secrets and the lies of the enemy. And so this is what the word is designed to do. The word is literally designed, the word is literally designed to give us life, right? The word, the word is literally designed to heal us. The word is literally designed to, um, to deliver us. And so he said, he said he sent this word. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says that, um, that he said the, the word is healing to my bones. Come on. Healing, healing to my bones and to my matter. So the word literally has the capacity because he said these words I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. So words are not just words. The biggest lie that the enemy ever said was, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but, but words will never hurt me. That is a lie from hell. Okay. Words do hurt. Words have the ability to edify. Words have the ability to build up, but they also have the ability to destroy. They have the ability to hurt folks. They have ability to, to, um, to wound people. And all of us, all of us have experienced that in some capacity. All of us has experienced, um, being the beneficiary of, of being built up or being a beneficiary of, of, of somebody's tearing us down. And it's through words. And so the word of God comes to build you up. The word of God comes to heal you. The word of God comes to, comes to deliver you. And so what I'm coming with you with today is the truth of the word of God. And, and, and God is going to heal many of us in our perspective, in our minds, in our emotion. Because a lot of what I'm saying, we've never heard before. Come on. A lot of what I've said, we've never heard it. Or we've never heard it in this way. Right? And so... So God, God has given me intentional living to share with you guys and to, to, to be a blessing to the body of Christ, to be a blessing to you guys so that, so that we can learn how to be successful, right? So that we can run, run, learn how to be proactive and we can be effective in our Christianity, in our walk, right? So, and that third, the third type of deliverance, or the third, no, okay, the third type of deliverance was casting out demons, right? And we learned that demons, you know, they don't really care. They can house us in many places. They can house us in our mind, they, right? They can deal with our minds. They can house us. They can house us in our in our um, flesh, right? Different parts of our flesh, whatever part of our flesh that we yield over to the enemy, he can do. He can he can um, dwell that place. He can you know suppress that place. He can oppress that place, right? He can torment us in whatever part of we give to the enemy. So the Bible says. Um, resist the devil and he will flee. Or the Bible says, obey God, resist the devil and he will flee. Flee. Paul said it this way. He said, give no place to the devil. So, and I talked a little bit about that. Once when you give a place to him, and then he, he literally has a legal, a legal right in, in your life. So we can't play, we can't play with the devil, right? We can't hold hands with him and then go, go to church on Sunday, right? 
We, it doesn't work. And when we do that, we'll have secret sins. And, and then that's how, you, that's how you develop shame and then and condemnation. And then the enemy speaking is here, ill, right? When, when, when conviction came to you at first and you didn't listen. You, but it doesn't have to be that. So we can't play hide and seek with the devil. Okay? We have to take authority over him. We have to take authority over him. So tonight, we're talking about deliverance. This is the third part, right, of the series. And, and today, the, the topic is basically this. How do I get free? And how do I stay free, right? Because I want to be free. I want to be free in my mind. Somebody y'all, somebody type down there for me. If y'all want to be free in your mind today, if y'all want to be free with every part of your being, you type, type for me. Teach me free. Teach me free. Teach me free. I want to be free. I don't want to be bound no more. I don't want to be bound in my body. I want my perspective to change. I want my perception to change. I want to know this, what, the, what the Lord is saying about me. I don't want to walk in darkness no more. I want to see. I want, I want to be, I want to literally walk in revelation, in illumination. I want to, I want to be able to know and understand what you're saying to me, to me through, through your word. I want to be free. So the, the first one, the first, the first, the first one, and if you have, if you, if you're taking notes, I encourage you to, if not, you can listen to this over and over, however, however many times you need to listen to it and get into your spirit, right? Because faith comes by hearing, not half heard. This is why I repeat things because it's not, if faith comes by hearing, it doesn't come because you heard it one time. So it's, it's the cycle of you hearing and hearing and hearing it. Then, then you begin to get more faith as you hear, as you hear. So the first, the, the number one way that we, we can um, get delivered, right? Or, or more so um, get delivered and stay delivered, right? Or get free and stay free is number one is live a lifestyle of repentance. We have to live a lifestyle of repentance. You know, the misconception is repentance is a one-time thing. I repented, that's it, da da, da. No, repentance is a lifestyle. When you first come in, when you first come into Christ, you repent it. But the, the Greek word for repentance is actually is called metanoia. It means to have another mind. When Jesus came, he said, The kingdom of God is upon you. The kingdom of God is at hand. And basically what he was saying, like, the way you were thinking before, you gotta change that. The way you were thinking about the, about God, the way you were thinking about man, it has to change. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is now. So now I'm coming with a new concept. I'm coming with new ideas. I'm, co I'm coming with a new mind. And, and you have to update your mind. You have to progress. The kingdom is at hand. What, the way you used to do things, you can't do it that way. Why? Because the kingdom of God is upon you. So repentance has to do with the changing of the mind. It means to have another mind. So I can't have the mind that I had in the past. If things, if old things have passed away and all things have become new, then my mind needs to be renewed because I'm still having the same thoughts. Why? Because I haven't renewed my mind. So even though my spirit is born again, my spirit is new, my mind is still the same. So I have to renew that. I, I have to renew that and I have to get delivered there because I'm not delivered in my mind. It's old ways of thinking, right? Old ways of thinking that I've been thinking about is falsities, is lies, is deception. So, seeds that were sown in me as a child, things that they were told me I would never do this, I would never be that, I would failures, I would never be able to do this. You, you, you goofy, you this, you that. Negative words, and the word the Bible says that God has a plan to uproot every negative word that the enemy has sown. So, for many of us, the it, the, the enemy has used our family members to speak death on us. The enemy has used our family to speak seeds of discord, seeds uh, that, that planted seeds within us that made us insecure, that made us fearful. We got to be delivered from fear. That's what, we got to be delivered from fear. Fear of failure, right? Fear of doing things. Fear. Come on. Fear of stepping out. Fear of doing things that we've never done. Fear. Fear is a big one. So we have to be delivered from these fears. We have to be delivered. Right, and a part of the a part of being delivered is getting in the word. Repentance is a lifestyle. It's not a one time thing. No, I have to I have to turn my mind. I have to change my mind daily, and that requires to walk with the Lord. So repentance that's number one. Number two is receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's another misconception. We think when we get we we think when we get saved we automatically receive the Holy Ghost. Right, that's not always true. 
It is possible for you to get saved and not receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Let me clarify. There's a difference between the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is what you receive by faith. And he comes to dwell inside of you. Right? He comes to, and he, he begins to deal with you from the, out, from, the, from the inside. Right? But many of us have, 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 the Holy Spirit has dealt with us from the outside. Without even being filled with him. So that's possible as well. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you, when, when he, when you, when you are immersed into him and his world. And he has more influence in your life. Why? Because you've been baptized with him. You've been filled with him. It's no longer you. You've literally died and you've been baptized with the spirit. When you just have the indwelling, you, this is why, we, this is why we, have, we see a lot of Christians that struggle with the life. Why? Because they haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because what comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is power. What comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is is authority. What comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is self-control. The fruit of the Spirit comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But when you just have the indwelling, if you hasn't renewed your mind, right, you still you, you still gonna struggle. And 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 one of the and there was a, there's a scripture that that Paul um in Acts in the book of Acts Paul Paul ran across some believers. He said that he and he asked them a question. He said, "Have you received the the baptism? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe?" And they said, we hadn't even heard of a such thing. We hadn't even heard of a Holy Ghost. What's that? Why? Because they was baptized with, with water unto repentance, which was John baptism. And even John himself declared, he said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who comes after me is he that's mightier than I. He shall baptize you with, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So what we need, what we need to live this life, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost. We need to be baptized with the Spirit. And that's totally separate than the Holy Spirit. That's totally separate within the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We need, we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to be able to speak in tongues. Because that's a, that's a very powerful gift. Right? We need that. So the, that's, so the, second, one, the second one is right? receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And, and the third one is this. We got to believe and apply the word of truth. We got to believe and apply the word of truth. Many of us have, have, have heard many lies, like everything that people have told us, even what they, what they tell us now, what they tell us about ourselves. You have to get to the place when you don't know nothing. He said, come to me as a little child. So you literally have to relearn. You, really, you have to posture yourself and position yourself to really learn I, and become a student of the word, right? And so if you claim to know everything, you already you already position yourself not to receive anything because he resists the proud. But when you position yourself in humility and say, Lord, I don't know. I need you to teach me all over again. I need you to teach me all over again. And and when you do it that way, then he's able to pour into you. He, he's able to give you wisdom. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of him and he will give it liberally. And so God is not withholding anything from us. We just lack asking. Amen? So, Believe and apply the word of truth. So what we need to know is this. I, I, I know what they said about me, but that's not important. That's not the truth, Father. I need to know what you're saying about me. Because everything that you're saying about me in your word is true. But the only way I can know it is if I get in it, right? So once so I get in the word, I dive in the word, and I, I begin to see what God's thoughts about me are. I begin to see the things that he said about me, right? And then I and then and then it may take a little time. It may be a, take a process of meditation. It may take a process of confessing. It may take it may take a process for me to believe it because you don't know you don't necessarily believe it the first time you hear it. But it's a process worth taking. Yes, God said that I'm the head and not the tail. He said I'm a, I'm be uh, I'm above only and not beneath, right? He said I'm the lender and not the borrower. You know, God said I'm I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? God said that I'm the, come on, we got to know what he's saying about us. He said his thoughts about us are good and not evil, right? He has a plan for us, and, and, a, and that plan is good, and, to, and he has a plan to bring us into an expected end. And so it's important to know what God is saying about you, because what people are saying about you ain't true. Huh. What people are saying about you ain't true. God loves you, and nothing can separate you from that love. You cannot earn and deserve the love of God. You have to receive that thing and believe that thing. Come on. Why yet we were sinners, he died. So in the midst of our worst state, 
He loved us so much he died for us. Are you kidding me? He decided to pay the penalty for our, for our sins so that we didn't have to. We just have to believe the gospel. We just have to receive the gospel. That's it. And the lies is this. You're going to hell for this. You're going to hell. Listen. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world. But I came that through that, that the world might be saved. Now, the world is already saved, but everybody in the world has not received the call. No, everybody in the world hasn't answered the call to salvation. So you have to answer the call. Otherwise, you can't experience salvation because it's a done deal. He can't go on the cross again. He already did it. Glory to God. Hi, you're the double shot. Glory to God. And number four is this. He says, continue. No, this is the fourth one, right? Continue in the word. And pursue a personal relationship with the Lord. We got to continue. He said in, in John 8, 31, he said, he said to, to those, the Jews that believed on him, he said this. If you continue on, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. And he says, the truth will make you free. How many of you want to be free tonight? How many of you want to be free? He said, he said, if you continue in my word, Right? Because most churches, we don't teach, we don't teach people to, to, to um, pursue a relationship. We teach them just to pursue church. And that's the difference. No, we need to pursue a relationship with God. Because church is not going to do it. Not alone. No, it's not going to do it alone. Absolutely not. No, it's not. Your traditions, he said, the, oh, Jesus, thank you. He said, your traditions have made the word of God a none effect. Your religion and your tradition has made the word of God of none effect. We too religious. We too traditional. God is not in that. God has moved away from that. God is in the spirit. He's doing other things. God, God wants to be in, in every mountain of influence. He's not just in church right now. He wants to be in the marketplace. He wants to be in government. He wants to be in the schools. He wants to be in Hollywood. But ain't nobody want to go. Because we too religious. And this is why we got to repent. Change the way we think. This is why we got to repent. Change the way we think. We need deliverance. See, everything I'm saying is relative to deliverance. I'm not just talking. Because deliverance is, is, is a part of the repentance. We have to change the way we think. We got to be delivered in the way we think. Because the way we think is not right. No, it's not. No, it's not. Everything we've been told is lies. The truth is in the word. And truth will make you free. Glory to God. Truth will make you free. The fourth one, glory to God. And, and after I finish reading all six of them, I'm going to go through some scriptures out that I got to read for you guys. The, the fifth one is this. Crucify. We got to crucify our flesh. We got to die daily. We got to crucify our flesh. It's not easy, but it requires a decision. And if we already, if we already in him, he said, if we already in Christ, we're dead. Are we supposed to be dead? But many of us are alive. Our flesh is so much alive. This is why we need deliverance. This is why we need deliverance. And the sixth one is to live in the spirit. We got to live in the spirit. We got to live in the spirit. Glory to God. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. Glory to God. So as we continue our pursuit in our relationship with the father. The Bible talks about in, in the um, book of James, the fourth chapter, seven through eight. He says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So, so it's a process. God is all about sowing and reaping the law of reciprocity. If you do this, then I will do this. Everything is conditional. It's based off what you do. If you make the first move, then he'll move. But if you're not moving, God's not going to move. God is waiting on you. And what he's saying is, if you draw nigh to him, if you draw nigh to God, God's going to draw nigh to you. He will not resist you. It's something about God that loves to be needed. It's something about God that loves to be called upon. It's something about God that loves to be a father, that loves to meet the needs of his people. It's something, it's something about him, you know? So if you draw nigh to him, then he'll draw nigh to you. Glory to God. Luke 9, 23 through 25. This is Jesus speaking. It's not me. This is Jesus. And he said, and he said to all of them, he says, any man desire to come after me, he, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake 
The same shall save it. So he, so I'm going to tell you what he's saying. I'm going to give you the interpretation. I'm going to give you the modern day interpretation of what he's saying. If you desire to come after Jesus, right, for all you believers, if you desire to come after, after Jesus, right, you got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. What does that mean? That means denying yourself. Denying your flesh. Denying the way you think. The, the, denying the way you feel, denying the, denying those natural those natural reactions when somebody do something wrong to you and they irritate you and they frustrate you, you have to deny that stuff. You can't respond based off how you feel. You have to deny your nat. Why? Because you did. And if you did, you don't. You're not supposed to feel that stuff. If you really did, a dead person don't feel, right? A dead person don't get offended. So he said, if any man that desire to come after me, he must deny himself. So, so literally, you have to be willing to be humiliated. You have to be willing to be rejected. You have to be willing, you have to be willing to be talked about. You have to be willing to be slandered on. You have to be willing. If any man desire to come after me, he had, let him deny himself. So you don't have to, you don't have to, come on. So you don't have to defend yourself. If you're defending yourself, you're not denying yourself. That's good. Let God defend you. Let God defend you. God said that I, he said, I'm the defense. He said that, he said that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So if vengeance is mine, then a part of us denying ourselves, a part of denying ourselves is dying to ourselves, right? Denying our flesh, which was the, which was the sixth one. Let me read another one. Let me read another one. Glory to God. He says, and he, he says in um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, he said, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sit on the right hand of God. He says, set your affections. I did a video a while back about setting your affections. He says, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead. We're supposed to be dead, right? And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is, who is our life, shall appear then shall you also appear with him in glory. How many, how many of you want to appear with God in glory? How many of you want to appear with Christ in glory? I do. Glory to God. I want to appear with him in glory. But it's, but it's based off, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. None of this stuff is automatic. Glory to God. It's not automatic. Verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members. See, it's conditional. You have to do something. The, the next verse he says to mortify. Your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, even evil, concipious, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience, in which you also walked some, walked some time in and lived in. And I've walked in this. Yes, I've done. I've done much. I've done pretty much all of this. I've done it. But I thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Right? I thank God. I've received, I've received the I've received salvation. I've received, I've repented. I'm walking before the Lord now. And now I'm trying my best to live this life and mortify my body. Mortify my body. And I want to define that. We're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna talk about it. What is mortify? The definition of mortify is to subdue, to suppress, to control, come on, or to discipline your members, your body. Right? So your body is not to lead you. Right? Your flesh is not to lead you. Your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions is not to lead you. You are to lead them. Glory to God. The Bible says that a man that learns to um, control his spirit is, big, is, bigger, is, is better than a, than, a, than a city with broken down walls. So we have to learn. We, have, we are spiritual beings. We're not bodies. We're not souls. We're not human beings. We're more than that. Well, this is a process that's worth taking. Come on. Mortify our deeds. So we literally, God's requiring us to subdue, to suppress our flesh. Our, the corner part of us. The part of him, the part of us that's not like him. Right? We have to discipline. We have to say, no, flesh, I'm not doing it. No, flesh, I don't want to do that. Right? But, but we have to be given also the tools to be able to do that. Glory to God. Romans 8, 12 through 13. He says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, 
but to live after, but not to not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. I'm telling you this stuff is conditional, right? You don't get rewarded for disobedience. For as many of you are led by the spirit of God, you are the sons of God. So who are the sons of God? Those that are led by God. Those that are led by God. And there's nothing wrong with the process. It's nothing wrong with the process. We just have to be willing to go through the process. And we can't judge people in that process. And this is it's been an issue with the body of Christ because we see people going through processes and we're judging them based on what we see. But we don't know where they're at in their process. Keep your mouth off God's people. Because God's going God will judge you. God will curse you. Keep your mouth off God's people. Glory to God. Keep your mouth off God's people. And that last one was living in the spirit. We have to we have to live we have to live in the spirit, right? I want to I, and I want to read one more. No, I got I got two more. Okay. And we all know this scripture. Glory to God. There if therefore be no way, there is therefore no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus. Now, now the, the the thing that irritated me the most, I heard a pastor preach this, but he didn't say the whole thing. And when you preaching this word, you got you got to say the whole thing because you missing. When you start messing up, then now you now you're not giving people the truth because he 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 only quoted half of it. He said there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, there ain't no condemnation. I can live however I want to live. I can do whatever I want to do. You better finish that. No. There's no condemnation to who? To who? He said to them that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's true. There's no condemnation to them that walk not after the flesh, but after the, but after the spirit. And and this may be hard for many of us. I understand that. This is why this is why we were to walk to walk and live a lifestyle of repentance, right? Because I'm not saying we won't mess up. I'm not saying we won't make mistakes. But what's important is that we keep going forward. What's important is that we keep our mind renewed. What's important is that we, we 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 keep our our hearts in a posture in a position to repent before God, and we keep moving forward. We don't stay we don't stay stuck. We don't stay stuck. We can't stay stuck. We got to keep moving forward. We got to keep progressing. Why? Because the kingdom of God is progressing. The kingdom of God is moving. And you have to move with it. Or you're going to get left. And you have to get to a place where the enemy can't speak to you no more. You got to get to the uh, to a place where the enemy can't, can't suggest things to you. Can he talk to you about you no more? Why? Because you know the truth. And you know that God loves you. Nothing can, nothing can change that. Nothing can separate you from his love. Listen. You have to get to that place. Glory to God. He says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own son in the likeness of flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, let, let, I want to give you guys some great news. Guess what? God made Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, so that you could be made righteous. Right? Religion would tell us, right? Stop sinning and be righteous. But that's incorrect. You, you want to stop doing something to be something. No. Paul said it this way. Awaken unto righteousness and sin not. There's a difference. When you awaken unto who God created you to be, and you awaken into your new identity, and you awaken into your, the new creation, old things have passed away and all things become new. When you awaken into that, you won't want to do those things no more. Many of us are asleep. We got to awake. Wake up. Many of us sleep. We got to awake. We st we trying to we trying to to not do the Ten Commandments. We're trying to do, not do the Ten Commandments when it's in the one. When it's in the two. Love. You see what I'm saying? We have to shift our focus. So Jesus, God made Jesus to be sins who knew no sin. So the same way we came in this world 
and we came as sinners, we didn't do anything to become sinners. But, but because of Adam's sin, we became sinners. We were just made, we just came into the world. So this is why we have to be born again. We didn't do anything to become sinners, but we came in to sin. So we have to be born again. And 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 Jesus, who's known as the, the last Adam, came to restore everything that, that Adam messed up. And so now I'm telling you today that you don't have to do nothing to be righteous. You have to receive that thing by faith. And as you receive your righteousness by faith in your new identity, and you receive that as your truth, you will believe that and the enemy can't deal with you no more. He can't talk to you no more. You won't want to do a lot of the stuff that you used to do. Why? Because your mind is renewed. You find you walking in your identity, your God-given identity, and, and, you, and, you've been, and, and God has exposed every lie in your life. So now you're walking in truth. Glory to God. He says in verse 6, For, for to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we want peace in our minds, right? But it's in walking in the spirit. It's being spiritually minded. It's being conscious. It's being God conscious. To be carnally minded is, is basically to have a mind that's not influenced by the Holy Spirit. Yes, righteousness is a gift. That's right, Nicola. So to be, to be carnally minded is to have a mind that's not influenced by the Holy Spirit. And there's many people even in church that have carnal minds. This is why they curse. This is why they treat people like crap. This is why they don't love. They don't have, they don't, they don't have the fruit of the Spirit. There's no, no manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit because they're carnal minded. Those that are spiritual minded, what we, what, we, what we heard earlier, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So it's safe to say we are not sons. Some of us are still children. Children have to grow to a place of maturity. And when you grow to a place of maturity, you become a son. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are, are in the flesh cannot please God. We can't please God in our flesh. No, we can't. No. And yes, we have real desires. We have real desires. You know, we desire a significant other. We desire, um, our, our flesh desire the need. It's something about us that have a need to want to be loved. It's something about us that have a, a, a need that, to want to be accepted. It's something about us, but we have to even deny that. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy. But it's doable. Right? Because he's able to keep us from falling. Come on. Glory to God. And his grace is sufficient, ain't it? Hallelujah. So, so we have to learn to be, to once we you know receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has that much influence in our life, right? Then we can learn to be controlled by the Spirit. We can learn to work with the Spirit. We can learn to be influenced by the Spirit, and not necessarily our flesh. And Galatians five and sixteen, verse um, through sixteen through twenty six, it tells us how to do that. He says in verse nine, "But you are not in the flesh." But in the spirit. And keep in mind, Paul is talking to believers. He's talking to the church in Galatia. He's talking to believers. So we have to change the way we even read our Bibles. When we read it, we have to look, okay, he's talking to believers. So he's correcting them. He's bringing correction upon the believers to their minds. Because um, a lot of them was doing things out of order. So he came to establish order. Glory to God. And the Lord is sending me to do the same thing. He says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If you, if you so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man be, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So he's saying, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're, you're not his. I'm sorry. You need, you need the Holy Spirit. And he said, and if Christ be in you, the body is now dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. Because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwell in you. So as many of us before we got saved, we all experienced, we all experienced, I've heard many people talk about that void that was in your heart, that void that was in your spirit, that void that you feel, that you feel empty. Why? Because you're dead. You're dead. You're spiritually dead. You don't have no peace. You don't have no joy. You don't have no fulfillment. You, you're not going to have anything until you're born again, until you're made alive. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you get born again, right? 
He quickens your mortal body with his spirit. He begins to literally give you his spirit. Right? And so your flesh is dead. Why? Because when, when, you, when you're gone, your flesh turns right back to the dust where it came from. But your spirit is eternal. Glory to God. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is, is now in you. The same spirit that was in Jesus is in you. The spirit of Jesus is in you. So why can't you do the works that Jesus did? Why can't you love the way Jesus did? Come on. Why can't you walk the way Jesus did? Why? He said the love of God impels us. But we, but we are grieving the spirit. We're grieving the spirit. So we can't do that anymore. We can't grieve the spirit anymore. Glory to God. Glory to God. Paul said this. This is what Paul said, because we got to learn to die, right? And this is, this is the Apostle Paul. He did many works. You know, he went through a lot of things, too, you know. And he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, it's the Amplified Version. He says, I assure you, believers, by the pride which I have in you, in your union with Christ our Lord, I die daily. I face death and die to self. This is Paul. We, we have to learn from Paul's example. Paul died. Paul died. Paul died. Paul gave up his will. He gave up his right to be right. He died. Glory to God. And Jesus died actually before he got to the cross. He died in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I'm going to tell you exactly when he died. As, as Jesus began to pray, and the Bible says that he began to cry, blood. Blood come, becoming out his eyes, but he's weeping so hard. And he said, Lord, if you're willing, take this cup from me, Lord. Because he knew what he had to endure. At this moment, this is when he died. Listen to me. He said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. When he said that, when he said that, he literally died. He died in his thought. He died in what he thought, how he felt, and what he wanted. He died, I'm going to say that again. He died in what he thought, how he felt, and what he wanted. That's how we're to die daily. We're to die in our soul. Because our soul is not saved. No, it's not. We're to die daily in our soul. Because every single day that the Lord allows us to wake up, we have to make another decision to live for him. And not for ourselves. We have to make another decision to live for him. And not the world. We have to die daily, right? We have to die daily. Glory to God. And this is how you do it. Galatians 5, 16 through 23. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Glory to God. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envious, murders, drunkenness, ravings, and such like. Which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what is the kingdom of God? I'm going I'm to break, break this. And I should have said this earlier. We did not get saved so we can go to heaven. Come, are you serious? That's not the reason we got saved. We got saved because we got work to do here. God is going to establish a new heaven and a new earth. We trying to die and go to heaven and God is calling us to do work here. God is calling us to bring heaven here. But we trying to die and go to heaven. And he just named all these things that's, that are dictated by the flesh, right? That causes us not to walk in the spirit. And I'm going to give you the most simplest way to understand walking in the spirit. The most simplest way that he allowed me to learn it. Because I thought it was just so spooky and so big. How do this? How walk in the spirit? I don't want to walk in my flesh. Right? It's being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, it means to be conscious and to be aware of God and what the things that he said. 
and the things that you know about the word. The Holy Spirit's job is to navigate you, to bring all things to your remembrance. And so when you read a word or, and when you when you um, heard a word, his job is to bring it to your remembrance. When you're under certain circumstances, he'll bring a word to you and then it'll teach you and help you how to navigate with wisdom. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, right? It's peace, it's long suffering, it's gentleness, it's goodness, it's faith, it's meekness, temperance, and he says, against those, against the, those, there is no law. So, so there's no law against you. No judging guilty against you that people can put against you when you walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Even my, even myself, I'm a loving person, but I've been talked about. I've been judged. You know, I've been lied on. But I understand it comes with this walk. I embrace it, and I allow God to fight my battles. I'm not trying to defend myself. I stay quiet, even if I know about it. And I give it to the Lord because his hands is much bigger than mine. And I try to practice everything that I teach. And it's, it's called intentional living for a reason. So I encourage you guys, all this truth that you got tonight, you are responsible for what you heard. The word comes to test you. The word comes to try you. And the enemy will try you as well. So if you are a recipient of this, of hearing this word, you will be tried on it. And I encourage you to put it to practice, put it to work, put it to work. So the solution, how I get free and how I stay free is living in the spirit. We're to, we're to cultivate a relationship with God and we're to live in the spirit. We're to live in such a way that we, we keep our minds renewed. Glory to God. We are, to, we are to cultivate the right relationships that are beneficial to where God has taken us, right? And we're to release those relationships that are not. Because some relationships are designed to stifle and to kill the purpose. Some of those relationships are designed to literally steal. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Some of, these, some of the relationships that, 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 that the enemy is sending in your life is not God relationships. And I plan, and I actually plan on going live. I'm, I plan on doing a teaching with my brother, Prophet William. We're going to come on together and we're going to talk about um, how to identify healthy relationships, right? How to identify healthy relationships and toxic relationships. Because we need to know, we need to know there are, there is a such thing as, um, we need to know that it's important to invest in those relationships that bring out the best of us, right? And release those relationships that doesn't, that's not beneficial. No. God don't want you suffering in relationships. No, he absolutely not. He don't want you going through a, a, any type of abuse, physical, mental, or emotional. That's not his will for you. He don't need you to suffer. Not in that way. He says suffer for righteousness sake. That's not for righteousness. That's you. And, and the reason that many of us allow ourselves to go through that is because the lack of value that we see in ourselves. Those in The insecurities within ourselves, we... You know, we want to be loved so much, we'll go, we'll, we'll just accept anything. And and one of the things the Lord had to teach me last year was that I had to raise my expectations and my value of myself. I saw myself too low. I had to repent. And I thank God now that I'm seeing myself the way He sees me. He don't want me. He don't want me going through that. No. He don't want you going through abuse. He don't want you being stifled in your progression. God wants you to progress. God wants you. So you have to get to a place that you're willing to do whatever it takes to go forward. You're willing to, to leave whoever. Look, listen, when God called, when God called Lot out of Sodom, when God called Lot out of, to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, and he told his wife, and he told him not to look back, and his wife looked back and she turned to a pillar of salt, that's not Lot's fault. That's not Lot's fault. We can't look back. You got to keep moving forward because when you look back, you might turn to a pillow of salt. So we, we can learn something from, from their mistakes. Don't no looking back. No, no looking back. God said, don't look back. Paul said this one part. This is what Paul said. He said, the one thing I do, because what happened when you look back, you start, you start thinking about all the things that, you know, how you, how you're not worthy, how you this and that. And the enemy begins to remind you of things. But Paul said, the one thing I do do 
He said, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I've persecuted the church. I've done this. I'm the least among you. But he said, the one thing I do, I focus not on the things that, I, I focus not on the things in the past, but I'm pushing forward to the higher calling. We got to be able to move forward. We got to be able to progress. Why? Because the, the kingdom of God is a forward moving, a forward movement. It's progressing, right? And that's, and time is running out. So we have to move forward. And if we in places, we in churches, we in places, we connect to people that's stifling us, that's, 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 that's not allowing us to um, function, that's not allowing us to, that's stifling our growth, our gifts and our talents, and it's not allowing us to flourish. We need to really, we need to really take account and to evaluate that, those relationships because that ain't the will of God. That ain't the will of God. So I encourage you guys, begin to practice these truths. Inten be intentional with the way, the, with your living for the Lord. Be intentional with your obedience for the Lord. Begin to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Begin to cultivate a relationship with, with those godly people that God has put in your life. Because God never intended for us to do life alone. He intended us to do life together. Because we're stronger and we're better together than alone. God doesn't want us isolated. Because when we isolation, with isolation comes the enemy. He always comes speak to you in isolation. Now, yes, there is a time where God would isolate you. But if God is not isolating you, when God isolates you, it's to deal with you. It's to build you. It's to deal with some things about you. But when you isolate yourself, the devil comes. Yeah. So we have to we have to do better, guys. Why? Because we know better. And we and, and if we didn't know better before, we definitely know better after tonight. I believe a lot of people have, have received liberation on tonight. If you've been liberated, raise your hand. If you've been liberated, you know, talk to me. If you've been liberated after after this with um through this teaching, if this has helped you, say yes. Teach me free. Yes, it's helped me. Yes. Amen. Can I get something? Can I get some hands? Glory to God. Can I get some hands? Can I get something? Glory to God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you helped us, that you helped us get free on tonight, God. And it's not, and it's not freedom like we're never, we're never going to go through things. No, it's a process. But if you're with me and you're willing to walk with me and go through this process of, of being liberated and experiencing all the benefits of salvation, not just some of them. I want all the benefits. How can you call yourself a born again believer and not want to experience all the benefits? Are you kidding me? There are benefits that's given to you. I want all my benefits. I don't know about you. I want it all. Yep. If he gave it to me, I want it. I want my inheritance. Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. I want my favor. I sure do. I want my peace. Yeah. It costs. Peace costs. Peace costs. Joy costs. Wisdom costs. Come on. The anointing costs. I want it. I want it all. Yes, it's, a, it's, it's your inheritance. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Healing is your portion. Receive it. Healing in your mind. Healing in your heart. Healing in your mentality. Healing in your emotions. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now. Deliverance. Receive it now. The deliverance is your portion right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. It's yours. It's yours. The enemy can't steal it no more. Now it's your. Now you have to protect it. You have to keep it, and you have to guard it. Now that you have this truth, now that you have this truth, the same thing that God told Adam, I'm gonna tell you. He put him in the garden. He said, "I'm, I'm, I'm, li I'm letting you be responsible for your for this garden. The garden is your life." He said, I'm putting you in this garden. You got to guard it, protect it, and keep it. You can't, you're responsible for this truth. If you allow the enemy to come in to, to come in and steal what, steal what you just got, you can't blame nobody but you. So you got to guard it, protect it, and you got to keep it. You got to guard it, protect it, and you got to keep it. Glory to God. And the Holy Ghost is going to help you. And God is going to send people in your life to help you. Glory to God. And God is going to send people in your life to help you. So if this helped you, if this helped you in tonight, 
Please share, 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 and get the word out and so it can help others. So it can help others get free. So it can help others be delivered. So it can help others get healing, right? And get understanding and get clarity. Glory to God. And this is Pastor Eric with Intentional Living. We have to know what God has given us, right? We have to be able to understand the word so that we can apply it, not just so we can preach and teach. No, we need to be able to live this thing. If you're not living this thing, listen, you you ain't got no right to be speaking it. You got to live it first. And when you live it, that every word God processes through you. And when you've been processed through that word, that word comes that the word comes out with so much conviction and so much power that it's able to set others free to do. Set the captives free. And so I'm praying that many of you are set free on tonight in some aspect and area. And if this word has blessed you, I encourage you to share it. I'm going to put my PayPal down if, if anybody wants to sow a seed or sow into this word. Uh, and God bless you guys. I love you. And um, be looking for more videos because I'm going to be coming to you more often. You know, the Lord gave me something else. Then I'm, I'm going to share it because I want to help. All right. So. I hope everybody have a good night. I love you. Like I said, this is Pastor Roscoe with Intentional Living. I hope you enjoyed. And um, I'll see you soon.